much for joining in. Today I am in the middle of working on another YouTube video and in the midst of completing the project, I discovered that I didn't have crinkle cut paper to match the project. And so I thought that this would be the perfect opportunity to show you all how I dye crinkle cut paper to match projects or orders that I am working on. So here's what you're going to need. You're going to need baby wipes. You're going to need a shopping bag, a grocery bag, all right? And you're going to need a heating tool that could be a regular blow dryer or it could be an official heating tool. You're going to need your spray bottle. You're going to need water. This could be regular tap water or bottled water, doesn't matter. You're going to need an empty bottled water or empty water bottle rather you're going to need your paints you're going to need your crinkle cut paper you're going to need alcohol and you're going to need a funnel now the the tape the shades of paints that you use <clears throat> excuse me the shades of paints you use is going to depend on the project that you are working on or you are trying to match all right and so i'm just going to grab what i am currently working on so you can see that this is what I am trying to match. I am trying to achieve like a purplish bluish tint color so I can fill this little box with that shade of crinkle cut paper. Now, what I will also recommend is because you are spraying and, and, and trying to um, splatter paint and water all over the place, you want to get your order or your item out of the way. So I'm just going we to are going to be working with the empty bottle first because you want to get your shade right before you put it in your spray bottle. All right, now notice I have a, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of water here. I'm going to add some more water. Because we're going to water it down, and then I'm going to add some alcohol. Alright, and so, there's no real measurements here, really. There's no me real measurements. The alcohol is actually just going to help it dry a little bit faster. Um, the water is going to uh, thin out the paint, so it's almost like a drippily dyeing effect. Um, and so it's also going to help it run through the nozzle and the straw in the spray bottle. All right, in the spray bottle. So hopefully it doesn't get clogged because paint can be thick. All right, and so I'm going to use this funnel. Now I've already tried this project. That's when I decided to stop and start over once I realized that I wanted to show you guys. But you're going to put your funnel in your bottle. And I want to start with the purple because the uh, the color is more or less in the purple family and again you really want to have your baby wipes handy because paint and water will get everywhere okay okay so i'm going to start with the purple and i'm just going to put the purple in the uh actually let me take the top off that would be easier Alright, and I just put a couple of globs in there, and some blue came out too. Alright, I just wanted to help a little long. Okay, and now there's a little bit of blue in there already from before, but I'm just going to add just a little bit of tint of blue. So it's not too purpley. I'm just going to help it along. All right. And then I'm just going to put, sorry about my arm. I'm just going to put this aside here. Then I want to put the top on. I want to shake it. This is going to help you see what color you have. All right, now the spray bottles that I have are not, they are not clear. So if you have some um, recycle bottles, this would be a golden opportunity to use them. But it's still a little bit too purpley for me. It's still a little bit too purpley. So I'm going to add a little bit more blue. And also when you use clear bottles like this, you can put it up against your project. 
So I'm going to bring some more blue in here. Now, I really like this color. It's looking blue. Oh, I think now it's a little too blue. I think I want to use this now. Now, this is about the amount of water that we started off with. I'm going to put some purple paint in here, and then I'm going to pour some of that. So you see how we're going back and forth, back and forth? And the best part about it is when you're done, if you have a lot left, because you will, you can actually just leave it stored in the water bottles. Down to a purplish blue. Oh, I didn't put any alcohol in this, though. So now we're down to a purplish blue. I'm going to put some alcohol in it just to help this along with drying. I put a little bit more squirts in here because it is, um, it's more water in here. And I am just going to pour just a little. I didn't pour a lot because remember, we're doing it gradually. And I think that this did the trick. And then I could save that this blue in this bottle for another project. So I think we got it. So what I'm going to do now is shake it up really good. And then I'm going to take this bottle and just pair it up next to my project to see if it matches well. So this is too purpley and this is too blue. So now I'm going to pour... I'm going to pour the purple back in here just a little bit. So you see, it is a going back and forth process. Ah, I think this is the right color. So now this is like an in-between. It's not too blue and it's not too purple. So I'm going to take this now and pair it up next to the order. Well, it's not an order because it's it's just a sample, actually. I'm so used to doing orders. It's not an order, but up against the project. I think I want to add just a tint of more purple. I think we could get over, honestly, but since we got it, why not? I think this is good. I think this is good. Part of me want to add a little bit more blue to it, but I think this is good. I think it's good. All right. And so what I'm going to do just to be on the safe side, because this is like purple right here. What I'm going to do is put this aside. I don't think I'm going to need any more of that, but I'm going to get a clear bottle and pour this in the clear bottle and see if I, I think I'm gonna like it though for some reason like I don't know the more I look at it just looking at the color now I'm just gonna take this and pair it up against pair it up against the project and so what I think though, I do want it just to it to be a little bit more darker. Just a little bit more darker. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another clear bottle and add a little bit more water, but this time I'm going to add a tint of black. So I have another bottle of water. And so what I'm going to do is pour some of this water out. I have so many empty jars in here, so All right, so I'm starting out again. And what I want to do is I'm going to add this like this just to water it down. 
but I'm going to add some black. Just a little though. I don't want to get too crazy here because I'm just trying to darken it up a little bit. Oops, see? See how to tighten it properly. That's why you need baby wipes. See? Now I like this color. It's Still got a blue to it, but a purple to it, but it's not too purple. I like it. I'm going to add a little bit of purple, and then I think we're good here. I think we're going to be good here with this color. I like this. Okay. I think that this is good. So... So what I'm going to take a little bit of crinkle cut paper, put it in this bag like so. Just take a couple of strands and I'm going to just pour it up there. And then I'm going to take that paper and then match it up against the, oh no, it's not thick enough. That's another thing too. If it's not thick enough, then you don't get a good consistency. So, so that means I need some more paint. So let me show you what I'm talking about. You see how watery it is? We don't want that. We don't want that. That's too watered down, which means that it's not thick enough. It's too, it's too watery. So that means that I have to put some more paint in which means I might compromise the shade here. So I really hate to do that, but I need it to be thick. So I'm going to put some purple, put some blue. I didn't put a lot. And just hope to thicken it up without compromising the color or the shade too much. All right. But it needs... And the best part about it. So yes, this is a messy project. But for me, it's worth it. To me, it's worth it. I know some people will say, oh, geez, Candy, I would just go. But if you're working on an order and it's 6 o'clock in the morning or 9 o'clock at night, you might not have a store that you can run to. Walmart doesn't have a huge selection of um, crinkle cut papers and colors. Even though they stay open late, like 12 o'clock or even in some cases 24 hours, they're closed. They're closed or they don't have it. Then what? You have to make your own. So this is still thin. I can tell that it's still thin. So... Actually, you know what? I just thought about something. I could do like a wash. Let me see how that's looking. Well, actually, this is better. This is not so thin. This is better. I just have to make sure that it's shaken up really good. So I have three shades here. I just want to show you guys what I have. I'm going to clean up a little bit. No, I always say clean as you go. Clean as you go. Alright. Alright, and so we have three shades here. We have this purplish. We have this midnight blue purplish. And we have a real purplish. So we have a blue. Can you see those different shades? Yeah, I think you can. I think you can. Alright. Okay. So let's get started. Get a new plastic bag. Okay. And so what happens here is the only thing that's going to be left here is that. And we're going to move that last. All right. And so we're going to get our spray bottle. And I'm going to put this in the spray bottle. That didn't even feel it. 
I hope that that's enough. Oh yeah, it will be enough. I don't know what I'm talking about because we ain't, we're not even dying a whole lot of um, crinkle cut paper because the little project that I'm making is small. And now this bottle can go in the garbage because you're not using that anymore. Okay? Because even if you have some left here, you might as well save it because you're not going to be able to reuse it. So you want to take a little bit out. And now with these, can you see how I'm doing that? I'm just spraying it. And then I'm going to bring some more in here. All right, now I'm starting to make a mess. Any extra of this paper that I have left, I can store in one of my little jars. So this should be plenty. This should be enough. So I'm just going to move this, put the top back on, and put it back on the shelf. And now we're going to just spray it and begin to just dye it. I love this color. This is a nice color. Now, if you have your knife or you have your plastic spoon, and if you don't, then you want to have your baby wipes, but you could just mix it together like so. Get rid of all that white and then loosen it up so you can see what's happening here. Now, this would actually be a nice effect, too. I could actually leave it like that. You see that? But... I think I want to, because the towel is white, this would definitely work. It definitely would work like that if I wanted like an ombre effect, which is pretty actually. I think I'm going to spray it a little bit more. I do actually like the white. But... Not in this one. Maybe another time. And then, I really do like that white bleeding through. I like it. I like it. I like it. I like it. So you're just going to do this. You're just going to mix it up. Loosen it up. Just so you know that the dye or the paint is getting all over them. So, if I wanted to make it that white effect, that white and purple effect, I could just simply add some white to, to this and um, that would be it. You understand if I really wanted that ombre effect. Um, I like I like the fact that it's like a purple wash. And I'm trying to sit here and decide if I really want it to be rich purplish or if I want it to be that washed effect. You see how it looks? It's that washed effect. It's not really dark, dark. But if I keep spraying, then it will get dark, dark. So that's how you can determine the deepness or the rich, richness of your color, the intensity of your color as well. So you're just going to play with it and make sure you get it all through. I see a couple of whites still spewing through, but I'm totally okay with that. I'm totally okay with that. So, then, 
once you get it to the shade that you want and you don't need to uh, spray it no more you want to spread it out now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move all of this I'm done with my spray see how much I have left I have a lot left and I'm gonna dump this on here like so this is why I like to use this and now I can see some white area now I'm gonna keep this handy because that's gonna be garbage and now I'm just going to spread it all out like so. And now if you had your plastic spoon or your plastic fork or your plastic knife, this will help you spread it out and separate it. What you're doing is you're creating a thin layer. And because this tray is plastic, you could just wipe it off. And remember, this is just a boot tray, you know, like the muddy boot tray that's that's by the front door. That's what this is. Like if you have a lot of kids or, you know, I like to work on it for craft projects like this. But um, And these don't cost a lot at all. I got this from Walmart. I believe it was no more than about five or six bucks, if that. Okay, so I have a thin layer. And so now I'm going to take one of my heating tools and I am just going to dry it like so. And you really want to make sure that this is dry before you put this on your project because it will stain your project and ruin it. So I would even suggest, if possible, to leave it overnight if you can. Like if you're doing this at night and your order is already packed up, you can wait until the morning to stick the crinkle cut paper just to assure that it has completely dried. And if you don't have time to wait, then you want to take your time and you want to dry this properly. Otherwise, you will be sorry if you rush this process. So notice how I am picking it up with my tool, my dowel. And I'm just getting that heat directly on it. Okay, so as you can see, it is drying. And this took about 15 minutes. And I also think the temperature of the room plays a big part in it. It's kind of cool in here. I have a jacket on. But remember, I my little build-a-basket area is in an outdoor room. And so, but how you know that it's dry is number one, you'll be able to hear it again. See how you can hear it? When it's wet, the paper will be soft and you won't be able to hear it. So, this heating tool is much hotter than a regular blow dryer, but the fan itself is not as intense. So, notice it's not blowing all over the place like your hair. However, you do not want to put this on your skin. Now, with the regular blow dryer, you can put it on your skin. You can put your fingers through your hair with the blow dryer in the other hand. This you cannot. You cannot touch your skin with a heating tool. Heating tools can be found at uh, the craft stores. They can also be found at hardware stores too. And I believe those heating tools are actually much hotter. So yeah, I'm just, just testing it now. And I see a few shades of white in here, but I am totally okay with that actually. I am. And I'm just getting it loose. Yeah, this is dry. See, a regular blow dryer would have been blowing this all over the place. And it doesn't get it dry as quickly.
But you cannot put this on your hair, by the way. This is not a substitute for that. Okay. Look at that. Oh, I love that. I love that. See that? I love that color. Okay. So now, I have dyed this. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? I love that. I love that. Okay. All right. So that's basically how you dye it. That's basically how you dye it. Um, it's a process. It's a patient process. So if you're not patient, this is not for you. But if you are one of these people that have to have it right, like me, I have to have the color match right, then this is for you. You will have time to do it because you want your orders right. And that's why sometimes people will say, where did you get that color from? I didn't see that at Hobby Lobby. Or I didn't see that at Dollar Tree. It's because I make my own colors and I make it according to the fabrics or whatever it is that I'm trying to match. That's all I have for you today. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for sitting through and watching this process. Um, tell me what you think. Tell me if you're going to try it. You can find me in the group Embroidery Boss or on the group Dollar Tree Money Makers. Now, I must tell you that I have not really been on Facebook as much as I have been in the past this year. You all know have been a very trying year for me. Um, and so I'm just trying to really get back on social media, but my business didn't stop. stop. So, and so I apologize for my absence, but I am glad that I am here and you are here with me and you are watching my videos still. I can't say that how much I thank you enough. And once again, thank you all for...